Ever heard of Bitcoin? In 2008, the mystery man or woman Satoshi Nakamoto released an open source code and mined the first ever Bitcoin. Probably with little inkling of the explosive growth that it would become today. The first official purchase using Bitcoin came two years later on 22nd May 2010, where a man purchased two Papa John's pizzas with 10,000 Bitcoin. Yum! Although prone to heavy fluctuations and market volatility, the value of a single Bitcoin has gone from a fraction of a cent in 2008 to a peak of 63,000 US dollars in April this year before coming back down to the current level of around 40,000 US dollars as of late September. It's hard to imagine a world where anything could be worth that much money. You might be wondering, what does this all have to do with me? And what does it have to do with UOB? Let's start with the basics. What is cryptocurrency? Let's meet our expert, Mr. Heng Kun Hao, UOB Head of Market Strategy. Hi, everybody. So essentially, a cryptocurrency or Bitcoin is a technological innovation that is built on this technology that's called Distributed Ledger Technology or DLT in short. And it resides on the blockchain information superhighway. Now, the key characteristics of DLT are very important. There are three. Basically, DLT is permissionless, it's distributed, it's decentralized. And as a result, it makes the information on the blockchain very transparent and requires lesser third-party verification and much more efficient and lowers the transaction costs. Now, one of the basic applications of DLT, as we know, is to create virtual currencies like Bitcoin. And Satoshi Nakamoto exactly had this in mind of all these key characteristics when he created Bitcoin to generate what we call a you know, peer-to-peer, much more efficient version of the digital cash. It's like going into a grocery store and buying a bag of apples without the hassle of wielding a plastic card or worrying about the microtransaction fees adding up. But surely there must be other important applications for distributed ledger technology besides buying apples and more apples, right? Yes. So investors are very focused on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies now because of the explosive growth. But there are much more important applications for DLT. In the digital asset space, this is something we call central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. And essentially, CBDCs are digital currencies that are designed and implemented by central banks across the world for their own respective countries. Now, they are one-for-one exchangeable for legal tender for cash. Now, what central bank digital currencies aim to solve are the payment riddles domestically, for example, within retail or wholesale payment, as well as potentially cross-border payment as well. It's a completely new way to transact. In addition to its efficient and frictionless nature, CBDCs also means reduced transaction costs. This means that everyone benefits. And hey, maybe even more apples for all. On one hand, CBDCs allow emerging markets with less efficient banking to participate in the global economy. On the other, countries with advanced digital banking systems can fine-tune monetary policies, therefore protecting the economy against modern-day threats like money laundering and financial terrorism. In a way, CBDCs democratizes the playing field. Everyone's part of the conversation. We are told many countries in the world are actively working on CBDCs. How are these studies coming along? The global race for CBDC is afoot and it is accelerating. According to the latest Bank of International Settlements survey, as much as 86% of global central banks are experimenting with CBDCs in one form or another. Now, we know that you know, the Bank of Japan are working on their digital yen, the European Central Bank on their digital euro, and of course, in the United States, the US Federal Reserve has also announced that they're doing a detailed study on their own version of CBDC that may result in the issuance of a digital US dollar. Now, in Asia, our part of the world, China is way ahead of the game. The People's Bank of China has went further to do public trials and tests of their own CBDC, the ECNY. And across 10 major cities across China, Beijing, Shenzhen, Chengdu, Suzhou, you name it. All this will accumulate in a major public trial next February at the upcoming Winter Olympics in Beijing. 
Singapore is also actively working on CBDCs as well. In fact, the MAS has long envisioned a financial world where Singapore actively uses multiple CBDCs like ESGD to transact across borders and has been conducting various CBDC trials via Project Ubin since 2016. There is no doubt that we are on the brink of a financial revolution. Just like how the world transitioned from cash money to credit, the next leg of digital blockchain-backed CBDCs is just as exciting. As international standards for CBDCs are set up and CBDCs across the world become what we call interoperable, I'm very sure that this financial innovation will take off very strongly. Now, in the years ahead, as Asian central banks, as ASEAN central banks across our region start to launch their own CBDCs, our customers' banking needs will also change. As the world innovates, so must you all be.